So I can go ahead and change my memory setting right over here. As you can see, uh, it did not change, it did not save, uh, probably because of the OVS agent, which we're going to talk about. Um, Okay, that's good. So, Tariq, do you find yourself, when you're using Oracle VM, um, mm -hmm. having to go into the command line often um, uh, to check things like what you were just doing, uh, to have a look, to fix things, to get it to work? Absolutely. Uh, Oracle VM is based on the industry leading Zen hypervisor, which is the platform that's used by Amazon, uh, which happens to be the, the dominant market leader in the cloud computing domain space. Okay, the second, I will come back to your question in a while. Let me go ahead and configure this, the second machine that you just came up. Uh, okay. Okay, now I'm going to attach my shared ESM disks in the order that I created them. Excellent. Okay, the refresh the second machine is still not being refreshed, although we know that the memory size, the virtual memory allocated to it is 1.5 gig. And that should be... Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and start up both of these virtual machines. It's important that you start both of them at the same time <clears throat> because we have to be entering um, the, during the first boot interview process, we have to be en entering interactively the fields required for the installation, and both of them need to be up at the same time. So, so as as you saw, the status initially was initialization initializing, and now it changed to running for both of them. I'm going to go ahead and click on the console, which is the VNC console. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with VNC, basically what it is is it's an acronym for virtual network computing. And what it does is it provides remote access to graphical servers or graphical desktops, your graphical environments. And it comprises of like a server running on the remote system and a viewer running on a local system. Uh, Zen essentially comes with VNC pre-configured and pre-built into it, so we don't have to do anything extra to get it up and running. So all right, let me switch the screen over here to the VNC console for the first node, for the first virtual node. Is this the first node in the cluster? Yes. Uh, and I entered the console password before that. Let me go ahead, before I say yes, let me go ahead and get the console for the other machine running as well. Okay. And this is the console for the second machine. So, as you can see, it's asking me the same question in both nodes at the same time. I have to I'm going to go back to node 1 and say yes. Now as you can see it has already attached the shared virtual ASM disks and has given them names. These names are automatically they're 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 specified as part of the 
parameter file that's needed for build cluster. Now I have to go back to the second node and say no to this question that no this is not the first node. So as you can see it changed the status of waiting for node 1 interview phase to be complete. So it's very neat little bunch of shell scripts that Oracle has packaged to automate the whole process. Okay. Hmm, that's interesting. So this is this is we've hit a bit of a snag here. Uh, bear with me while I fix this. I'm going to have to power off this machine. This is how you guys know that this is not pre-recorded, but this is truly live. <laughs> That's true. Somebody did ask a question, and um, by the way, we will have a little more time for questions during this session than we have during the past two, so feel free to put questions out there. We will do our best to get to as many of them as we can, um, but I do expect it will be a little easier during this session um, just because of the way it's going to be laid out. Uh, somebody asked a question, which we can hop to, about the difference between Oracle and VMware Workstation when configuring Rack. Um, that's, uh, well, uh, the, the question uh, is phrased Oracle VNC. Um, I, think, I think he means Oracle VM, which is what we're looking at here, Oracle Virtual Machine um, versus VMware. They're, they're two different products um, that uh, really mostly do the same thing. I mean, 90% of the functionality is the same. Um, so the, the, the main differences for doing Rack, um, uh, Tariq, I think you've, you've done VMware as well, right? Yes. Yeah, so Tariq has done both. The, the main difference is um, I've done a lot of VMware. I haven't done Rack with Oracle VM, but I've done other things with Oracle VM. Uh, the main difference is just how you, for what we're doing in this exercise, it's just which dialog box you go to. Um, you do all the same things with both of them. You have a shared disk. You have a private interconnect, a second network segment that you configure. Um, so. So it's just it's a matter of semantics, and there are, but from our perspective, there aren't uh, major differences. Also, I'd like to add one more thing. Um, while the process is very similar, Oracle VM Virtual Box and Oracle VM, uh, I'm sorry, VMware Server are desktop products, so you actually use them for more desktop-like activity or your laptop-based activity, where Oracle VM is an enterprise-grade solution that you can actually use to virtualize your entire data center. So, uh, VMware Player is the desktop edition. The VMware Server is, uh, well, <laughs> it's in the middle. That That is sort of designed to be sort of uh, server grade, um, but it isn't a bare metal install. And then ES, but Oracle VMware Server, I think they, they've stopped all development on that as far as I'm aware. Um, in fact, I was just talking to somebody at EMC about that last week. Um, uh, the sort of future direction I think that VMware is pushing, or well, EMC now, is uh, with, uh, is the ESXi is their free product. And that is a bare metal. ESXi is free and it's a, it's a bare metal install. Uh, similar to Oracle VM, um, and uh, and then they have their sort of a desktop version, uh, the the VMware Player, which uh, is very similar to Oracle uh, VM VirtualBox.
Okay, uh, we're coming back to where we left off. Apparently, the shared ASM virtual disks did not attach. Sometimes that can happen uh, because of the delay in the synchronization between the OBS agent that resides on each one of these Oracle VM servers. So <clears throat> I'm specifying the different fields needed here. Uh, So the name of the first node, the public IP, and as you can see, it automatically filled in the priv and the vip names, the private IP. Now, what you do notice is that these are 192.168 subnets, which are basically conforming with my home Wi-Fi router. Okay. Same thing with the second node. As you can see, the private IPs that I'm specifying are on a different subnet. So they emulate uh, the private part. Okay. Specifying the domain, which is Brain Surface OVM, Oracle VM Manager. There's no DNS that I have at home, so. Subnet mask, default IP. You know, if I have a Netgear WNDR3700 router. I paid almost $200 for it. Spent extra money. It's a gigabit Wi Fi. And that's the gateway. That's the IP for it 192.168.1.1. That's typically the IP for Netgear routers. The scan name, which is the the grid naming service. Again, this will not work because I do not have a DNS server here. But for all our purposes of learning and practicing, cluster should set up. And giving the scan a virtual IP. Yes, yes, and that's it. We are, we have liftoff.